say on Green County. I'm Travis Raychek, joined alongside by Jesse Mitchell in the booth today. And Jesse, when we look at these teams, Knoxville County, many considered the best in the entire state. Green County, they've overcome a lot of adversity just to reach this game. The perseverance kind of paying off for them, but they have talent as well, especially at the QB spot. Absolutely. It starts with number one, T Terrence Woods. Terrence is a guy who can do it with his legs as well as his arm. Over 2,000 yards passion, passing, they're going to be relying on him today. Woods is very good. He's got a very experienced experience unit around him, an offense that has evolved over the years. When I went to Green County 16 years ago, we were kind of mostly, I came out of Wayne County, we were doing the veer in the midline, and now we've kind of updated our offensive coordinator and defense coordinator, just do a great job of what they do, and the kids, I guess the the thing is that the kids believe what we're doing on both sides of the ball because that's the battle you got to win. Green County has probably been the underdog in the last few games in the playoffs just to reach this point. They'll be the underdog again today, but what is it going to take for them to pull off the upset? They must establish the one-two punch with Franks and Woods. If they can... ...of our team down on the field... Kim Tanner. Well, thank you, guys. As you know, once you get to this point, it's an emotional game. And there's there's one more thing that's a factor here that we need to mention today. First of all, on one side of the ball, Knoxby has been that powerhouse freight train uh, approach to this game. And as far as Green County goes, they've had another battle to fight. Their head coach, Coach Ainsworth, has been uh, ill this year, has had to go to Mayo Clinic. His mother-in-law has been ill, and his son... Uh, has not been doing well at all. He's also been very ill this year. In fact, they're hoping to have him here at this game today so the family can all be here together. Now, that's brought a different element to that team that's brought him to this game today. And as you all both well know...
Tuesday, ROTC color guard, Joyful Curry, Tamara Gooch, Darshanika Tavison, Alternitris Brewer, and Falcony sponsor, Master Sergeant Michael Johnson. At this site, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you join Mr. Queen of Dunn, a student at Lonsby County. Live from Mississippi's Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. This is the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. Welcome to a picture-perfect Saturday afternoon in the capital city as we are getting ready for the Class 4A state championship game. Undefeated Noxubee County taking on Green County. I'm Travis Raychek, joined alongside by Jesse Mitchell in the booth today. And Jesse, when we look at these teams, Noxubee County, many considered the best in the entire state. Green County, they've overcome a lot of adversity just to reach this game. The perseverance kind of paying off for them, but they have talent as well, especially at the QB spot. Absolutely. It starts with number one, T Terrence Woods. Terrence is a guy who can do it with his legs as well as his arm. Over 2,000 yards passion, passing, they're going to be relying on him today. Woods is very good. He's got a very experienced unit around him, an offense that has evolved over the years. When I went to Green County 16 years ago, we were kind of mostly I came out of Wayne County, we were doing the veer in the midline, and now we've kind of updated our offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, just do a great job of what they do, and the kids, I guess the, the thing is that the kids believe what we're doing on both sides of the ball, because that's the battle you got to win. Green County has probably been the underdog in the last few games in the playoffs just to reach this point. They'll be the underdog again today, but what is it going to take for them to pull off the upset. They must establish the one-two punch with Franks and Woods. If they can do that, they can keep Knoxby off the field and they have a chance to win. Knoxby, a very good defense, a very good offense as well, and it is centered around one record-breaking running back. Absolutely. You're talking about Daryl Robinson. Daryl Robinson has broken the record that we thought would stand for a long time, 49 touchdowns in one season. This guy's been busy. He uh, breaks that record held by DeCenzo Miller, like we said, for so long. But it's a veteran team that has helped Knoxville reach this point. 23 seniors, they worked very hard. They set a goal at the beginning of um, the spring. They said that they were going to go undefeated and play for a state championship. And these guys worked tremendously hard to get to this point. And, and, you know, they're just great leaders. These 23 seniors makes our team so special. The Tigers have answered every challenge that's been presented to them to get to this point undefeated. How do they cap it off with a championship? It goes back to that guy, Daryl Robinson. <laughs> you have to get him the ball as much as possible. When you get the ball in his hands, magic happens. He finds the end zone. So there we have it. Noxby County taking on Green County here in the championship game. We want to introduce, though, the third member of our team down on the field, Kim Tanner. Well, thank you, guys. As you know, once you get to this point, it's an emotional game. And there's there's one more thing that's a factor here that we need to mention today. First of all, on one side of the ball, Knoxby has been that powerhouse freight train uh, approach to this game. And as far as Greene County goes, they've had another battle to fight. Their head coach, Coach Ainsworth, has been uh, ill this year, has had to go to Mayo Clinic. His mother-in-law has been ill, and his son uh, has not been doing well at all. He's also been very ill this year. In fact, they're hoping to have him here at this game today so the family can all be here together. Now, that's brought a different element to that team that's brought into this game today. And as you all both well know, anything can happen in the playoffs. Guys. 
Thank you very much, Kim. And the Wildcats have definitely been playing inspired football on the winning streak they are on to reach this point. Well, when we return, we will have kickoff of this Class 4A championship game. Knoxby County taking on Green County as part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. The 2012 Gridiron Classic is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Now more than ever, it's good to be blue. Bank Plus, it's more than a name, it's a promise. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. And energy for the Mississippi High School Football Championships brought to you by Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. For whom does the cowbell ring? For our students, winning national competitions. For our faculty, providing outstanding learning experiences. For our research, improving our future with each new discovery. For our outreach and service, touching lives every day. For whom does the cowbell ring? It rings for all of us at Mississippi State University. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Broadcast of the MHSAA football tournament on MPB is made possible in part by Chimneyville Smokehouse, smoking Mississippi since 1989. Applebee's, Applebee's proudly supports Mississippi high school football, Soul Shine Pizza Factory, Feel the Love, and Mama Hamill serving up scrumptious southern comfort food. So far this weekend, Four state titles have been handed out. Now it's time to decide the 4A champion. Johnny Ainsworth leading his Green County Wildcats into this afternoon's matchup against unbeaten and top-ranked Knoxby County in Class 4A. Tyrone Shorter looking for his first state title as a head coach. And Jesse, Coach Shorter, and the Tigers win the toss. They want the ball. They want to put that offense on the field that's been so good all season. Absolutely. They want to get Robinson established early. <clears throat> that's what you want. You want to come out and swing the first blow. Coach Shorter says, give me the ball. Let me put my guy on the field and show you what he can do. But what I'm most excited about is seeing that defensive lineman, Dylan uh, Bradley, come out and play. He's supposed to be a pretty good player, one of the best in the state. Absolutely, he is. Uh, you're talking about the guy probably leading the state with 19 sacks. Knoxville County has three players with Bradley as well as Robinson and then Antonio Ryland that were picked for that Mississippi-Alabama All-Star game, which is one of the highest honors you can have in Mississippi. So we'll see their town. We'll see what Green County has in store, a team that – has overcome a lot to reach this point, and they're playing on momentum and inspiration. The opening kickoff is underway. Fielded on the far side, just floated out of bounds. Eric Hunt bringing it down for the Tigers, so Noxaby will set up at around the 36. 
And for the Tigers, it is D'Angelo Ballard, a 6'1", 200-pound junior that will handle things under center. And, of course, we've mentioned Robinson. We'll mention Robinson a lot today. 49 total touchdowns, which breaks DeCenzo Miller's longstanding state record. Had six last week to get him over that mark. And he'll line up behind Ballard here on first down for Knoxville County. And the first give will go to Robinson, stretched along the right side. Nothing doing, though. Loses a couple. Great team tackling. That 4-3 defense, they had seven men in the box starting off. Safety walk down. They're committed to stopping the run right now. Great play by the, by the, uh, the defense for the Green County Wildcats. Dalton McDonald in on that tackle as part of a group of Wildcats making the stop. So second and 12 facing the Tigers. Ballard again, Robinson, this time going to go left. Stiff arm, gets to the corner. Wow, that's just great effort by the running back. Robinson, they, they played good defense. They got there, they set the edge, but he was able to continue to try to stretch the ball and get it around the corner. Here it is coming at you. You got one defense player right there on him. Here's the second one. It's good stiff arm, good stiff arm. Positive run out of something that should have been stopped in the backfield. So that will set up a third and five here on the opening possession. You look at Robinson and his numbers. They are astronomical. Ballard looks to throw. He's in trouble. Going to have to tuck it and run. Chased out of bounds short of the 45 and short of the first down. Green County comes up with a three and out. Green County came on a blitz that time. They were expecting pass. Guy came, the backer came running through untouched and the quarterback had a decision to make just decide to take what he can get and get out of bounds great 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 start for the green county defense so keanu franks back deep to receive for green county franks will back away from it and let knox be down it at the 21 yard line so that is where the wildcats will start their first possession this portion of the broadcast brought to you by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. They're an official partner of the Mississippi High School Activities Association. They're the home team for insurance. So here we go, Wildcats first possession. Terrence Woods will keep on first down. There he is, straight out the gate. Dylan Bradley getting good penetration making a big hit that's how you want to set the tone you're supposed to be one of the best defensive players in in this state sure so woods stopped right at the line of scrimmage here's a look at woods and what he's done over 1700 yards passing over 700 on the ground and they'll keep it on the ground here this time though to give to franks great play by the defensive end number 29 he just came down and Follow flow, make the tackle in the backfield. Here it is right here. Coming down, check, check. Nothing's there. Go and make the play. Great hustle, great play. Javancy Jones, one of the top players on this Knoxby defense, and there's a bunch of them. So third and six. There he is. Bradley Dylan wraps Bradley. up Woods and throws him for a big loss. Now, this kid's something special. You, you have a lot of the college saying he's not quite big enough, but I tell you, this kid, he makes plays. He's only about six feet, maybe six one, but he's an explosive player who knows how to use his hand and get what. There it is, just straight <coughs> speed rush up the field from a three technique. Great play. A good leverage to get into the backfield and then slings down Woods. So a three and out for Green County as well. Their first punt of the game. This one fielded. Robinson across midfield down to the Wildcat 40-yard line. So, Knoxby County with good field position when they start their second possession. You can show your spirit by texting your school's keyword to 46786. Knoxby County, your keyword is gridiron8. Gridiron, the number 8. Green County, your keyword is gridiron7. Now, the school with the most votes at the end of the game will win a $1,000 donation 
from Blue, Claw, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. Standard text messaging rates do apply. One vote per phone will be counted. On first down, it's Robinson again. This time he tripped up after about a two-yard gain. That was a great play by the defensive line in Clifton Robinson. He just stuffed the play and stayed in his gap. Don't try to do everybody else's job. And that's what you're going to see from Green County. They're team-oriented. Oh, wow. There's Robinson going out. Looks like maybe an ankle. Wow, this, this he's going to go down. I don't know where he, he took a shot, but he's favoring that right leg. That's a major development early on in the game here. Absolutely. This is a game changer. Don't get me wrong. Knox McKinney. Knoxville County has some great players. There's some great players that can step in. Let's see what happened here. Going up. Wow, I think he just kind of got that ankle or, or maybe it's a helmet to his thigh. And, you know, some players come. It, it just depends on how hard he was hit and how he was hit. He may be able to bounce back and get back in the game or that may put him out for tonight. Let's hope that he's okay. So Robinson getting assisted as he walks off the field here. Picked up three yards on that play, so when uh, we resume, it'll be second and seven for Knoxby County, but that's definitely something we're going to keep an eye on with Daryl Robinson having to leave the game early on. He's going to go over to the table and get checked out. So in his place, you will get Javancy Jones getting a look at running back, and Jones will get the carry up the middle and picks right up where Robinson left off. First down yardage. Travis, that's the thing about Knoxville County. They're deep. They're deep with talent. One guy comes out and rotates in. Just straight, give him give him the opportunity to get a fill of the game. <clears throat> give him the ball and straight up the middle run. He gets what he can. Give him an opportunity to get the fill of the game. Looks like they're going to go with a rotation there in the backfield. Now you're going to see Fernando Phillips as the deep man in this three-back look. And Phillips will get the carry. Around the right side, down inside the 25. It's a great stop by Shaquille Franks. Shedded a block to get there. Looks like we have a flag on the field, though. It was a late penalty that came in here. Phillips gained about four yards on the first down carry. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance, first down. Last thing you want to do is give Knoxby County any extra yards. Coach Ainsworth can't be happy about that penalty. It'll move the ball all the way down to the 12 and an automatic first down. Green County can't afford to give Knoxby County help. So again, that same look, three backs behind Ballard. He'll go to the deep man, Phillips. Phillips squirts to the outside. He's got the corner. He's got the end zone. Tiger touchdown. That's just man-on-man -man football. Let your big guys up front handle their big guys up front. Actually, that time, Green County had eight men in the box, and they were walked another safety down. But, you know, these guys, Knoxville County, we said they're talented. They're talented all the way around. They have a bunch of guys who can do a lot of different things. It's just feeding you guys football and let them do what they do best. And Knoxby will line up to go for two. Again, the handoff. Again, Phillips untouched into the end zone. And an 8 to nothing lead as the Tigers jump out on top. Robinson goes down. Next man up is Fernando Phillips with the score and the two-point conversion. This is the way Coach Shorter wanted to start and not the way Coach Ainsworth wanted to start. But this is an opportunity to rally, rally, rally your kids. Green County's been down all season long. They found a way to win. So let's see how they come out and respond. Knoxby County taking that possession, going 40 yards down the field to punch in the first score. They do it in just a minute of time and come into the end zone. Fernando Phillips, his second TD on the ground this season, came into the game listed as a starting wide receiver, but you need him in the backfield, fine. He's versatile. That's right. Use your talent. These guys are versatile. They can do a plug and play. Coach Shorter said, look, I have a bunch of guys who can do a bunch of different things. He needed them early. That's the way to step up and make big plays when your lead guy goes down. His 
Ballard that does the kicking for Knoxaby. Straight down the center of the field. It'll be taken there by McCann. McCann out to the 25-yard line, and that is where the Wildcats will start their second possession. It's good coverage by Eric Hunt and the rest of the Knoxaby County Tigers. Time for Green County to come in and put up, put together a sustained drive. They need some sort of point. You don't want to let Knoxville County get way out, out front. It's hard to catch up with the team that's powerful they, as they are. Today's games and all other Gridiron Classic matchups are going to be streamed live on ESPN3.com. You can also check out real-time highlights, M-I-S-S-H-S-A-A-Network.com. And on the first down give, goes right up the middle to Franks for about nine. That's what you got to have. You got to put some sort of pressure on these guys. Frank saw the hole and he pressed it. It's a great run on a speed sweep. Cut it up. If it's there, take it. If not, then continue outside. It's a great read by the running back. Up the middle. Gain of about a yard, but it'll be close to a Green County first down. Dylan Bradley, number 94 in company again. This kid, he's going to be all over the field tonight. He's a big time player, and this is his opportunity to show it on, on TV. So it will be good enough for the first down. Green County moving the sticks for the first time this afternoon. Woods, inside handoff. This time, it goes to Raymond Crumpton. Great lead block on that play. These guys, you, we're getting a lot of looks from Green County right now. They're going to run the ball, but they're going to do it out a lot of different looks tonight. Woods will bring a man in motion. He'll fake the handoff. Tries to get to the outside, but going nowhere. Coming up from the defensive secondary, Eric Hunt with the tackle. Same guy made the tackle on the kickoff. Knoxville County is going to be aggressive, offensively and defensively. You see them, they're playing downhill on the other side of the ball. So third and seven facing Woods and the Wildcats. And we have movement up front. He goes, it's the thing about playing in the state championship, everybody's rare, you know, ready to go, and you got to keep your composure and, and not let the, the, the atmosphere get to you. That time it cost him five Good yards. Ball. Offside on the defense. Five yards, third down. So offsides on Knoxville County. That sets up a third and short. Much more manageable here for Woods. He'll hand off. Frank's going to try and stretch. Wow. Wrapped <laughs> up quick. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Dylan Bradley again in the backfield. Makes the, He makes the, corner, uh, the running back commit before he... He really has to watch this great penetration. He's there, stretches the play. The rest of the guys come in. That's the way to play defense. You, they have to get him under control. Coach Ainsworth, Ainsworth knows that coming into this game. He has to double him or do something to stop Dylan Bradley from being so disruptive. Fourth down, Green County is going to go for it. They need about half a yard here. Or Woods dropping back a little bit farther. He's going to step into it and get a kickoff. That one hits and goes sideways at about the 31-yard line. So Coach Ainsworth backs off, taking the risk there on fourth down, goes ahead and kicks it away. Let's send it down to our sideline reporter, Kim Tanner, with an update on Daryl Robinson. Well, it looks like they're going to be able to bring Daryl Robinson back in. He's been nursing a thigh bruise the last couple of weeks, but they took him back in the locker room, checked him out, and they're, they're working him out trying to get him back in now. That's a tough dude in uh, a state championship game. It's going to be hard to keep him off the field. Absolutely. This is what you work all year for. It's an opportunity to come play in the big game. He's not going down without a fight. Now he's back in there right now. Deep man in the backfield. Robinson will get the carry. He's up the middle and works his way out to near the 35-yard line, a gain of four. See Green, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Knoxville County going with three back set, two lead blockers uh, with the power eye. Just get you guys out front, get some bodies on bodies, and let your running back do what he does. And great, 
and they're going with one of their offensive linemen as the lead men in that formation. This time, Robinson nowhere to go. A good play by Caleb Smith coming in from his middle linebacker spot. Caleb Smith is one of these guys for Greene County that's been solid all year long. He's their leading tackler. He's one that they're relying on to try to get a hat on, on Robinson. That's the way to do it. Get downhill. Get him before he gets started. So the Tigers facing third and six. Ballard will pitch to Robinson. Robinson stretches. He's got the first down and more. Daryl Robinson knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That's the, that's, that's the dangerous thing about Daryl Robinson. He can commit to something inside, and if it's not there, he can bounce and get around the corner. That's exactly what he did here. It's a great initial push by the defense. They got everybody, took on the initial blocks. Then he just turns the corner and uses his speed. Great run, great finish. The thigh seems to be uh, okay, at least manageable for right now. Robinson remains in the game. First down for the Tigers near midfield. Once again, they give it to Dara. Hit immediately, though, at the line of scrimmage. A big play that time for Greene County and number 12, Jarvis Wallace. That was an important tackle, Travis. They committed eight guys in the box, and a blitz was coming the other way. As you see, he's the only player there with three uh, Knoxville County players. It's a great tackle and a much-needed tackle. Wallace, another one of those guys on this defense with over 100 tackles, leads the team in sacks. He's a, he's a key there on that defensive end spot. So second and nine for Knoxville. They're going to go play action. Ballard rolls right. Pass a little bit high for Jones. Shaquille Franks out there running with him step for step. Pretty good coverage. Would have taken a perfect throw and just a little bit too far for Ballard. So the big third down coming up here for Greene County. They got to consistently stop these guys on third down. If not, it, it knocks the county given too many opportunities. They are an explosive team, explosive offense. You want to limit their opportunities to, to put points on the board. The big, this right here is a big play. So far, Knox be one of two on third downs in the game. This third and nine. Ballard has all day to throw, but now he's feeling the pressure. Chased out to the right. Gets it to Robinson. One-handed grab, but he's going to lose a bunch on that catch. Wow, great catch. I mean, it was creative, but great catch and great coverage by Shaquille Franks to get out there and make the tackle on Robinson before he can get started. You see the, the quarterback, he's scrambling. I thought he was going to take off with it. Then he sees his guy, gets it to him. Great one-hand catch with good, solid defense by Shaquille Franks. Nice open field tackle, so loss of five is going to force another punt for Knoxville County. Ballard will get it away. And again, Wildcats will just let it roll. Franks, Keanu Franks, that is, doesn't want to get involved with it. 26-yard line is where Greene County will start their next possession. Let's see coming out if Greene County does something different to try to stop Dylan Bradley. He's been disruptive so far. Uh, they needed something positive to happen. They need to get across the 50 at, at least. Woods alone in the backfield. As he brings a man to his left, will give it inside to Tyler McCann. And not much work in there. Knoxville County isn't respecting the pass at all. That time they had eight guys on the line, not just in the box, but on the line. They're committed and selling out completely to the run. Green County needs to switch it up and probably put the ball in there a little bit. Second and nine, again, inside give, and again, absolutely nowhere to go. You get the big fella right there, Deshaun Hopkins coming up with the tackle. Well, are you a high school sports fan? Join the conversation about high school sports, not only in Mississippi, but from across the country. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Play on Sports and check out PlayOnSports.com. Comprehensive state-by-state -state regular season and championship coverage. On third and eight, we have a penalty before the Wildcats can get the playoff and it looked like motion up front for Green County. Green County can't afford to continue to shoot themselves in the foot. Dead ball, offside on the offense. 
I'll push them back five, third and 14. You can expect Knoxby County to send the house here. Woods feeling the pressure. He has wrapped up a host of guys. will bring him down. Jeremy Hunt leading the charge. <laughs> you called me, Travis. They knew third and 14. Don't give them time. We're not giving them time to sit back there and pick us apart. They brought everybody they could, locked their corners down one-on-one, -on -one and said, boys, get there before he can get it off. There it is. A double-A gap blitz. Center and the guard didn't pick it up straight. Free run to your quarterback. So Devin Petty into punt for Greene County. A couple guys back for Knoxby, including Robinson, as this one will bounce softly and land right at the 40-yard line. And Come. Knoxby County's only scoring drive of the game started right here at the 40-yard line following a punt. Absolutely. Coach Ainsworth team uh, defense, they're playing team defense. Everybody's being assignment sound, getting their gaps, getting their men. They're being aggressive and coming downhill and blitzing, but, you know, they're playing solid defense. Let's see if Knox County can put together another scoring drive. This time, Ballard, quick pass, a little bit too high as he was looking for Jesse Bryant. You'll see Knox County throw a few passes to keep you honest, but what they really want to do is get the ball in Daryl Robinson's hand. Second and 10 from the 40-yard line. And they will do just that. Robinson up the middle. But Robinson grabbed there. Franks in on the tackle as well as Caleb Smith. See Robinson grimacing as he gets up again. That thigh. It's going to be tough for him to go out. I think he's going to try to stick it out and make the best of it here this evening. Look at him. Don't, no, no, no. Let me <laughs> say yeah, they tried to they tried to shuttle another running back in the game, and he uh, shooed that idea away. So third and six for Knoxby, and they'll give it to Robinson, and he will get right down to the 30-yard line, close to a first down. It's going to be extremely close, Travis. With a thigh injury like that, where it may be a bruise, is it one of those where you want to keep it active? Do you want to keep it? Uh, hot, I guess you could say. You absolutely do. If you give him an opportunity to sit down, it may stiffen up on him and make it more difficult. You want to keep him moving and keep him going. That's the only way he can withstand, uh, continue to play today. Even as on the sideline, you want to try to keep some heat on him. No big ones for Robinson, but steady production. Nine carries, 35 yards here in the first quarter. Another penalty before this play gets off and going. Execution infraction on the offense. 12 men in the huddle. Five yards, first down. So that'll push him back to the 35-yard line. Knoxville County up 8 to nothing on Greene County. The Tigers scoring earlier in the quarter on a Fernando Phillips TD run. Phillips also getting in on the two-point conversion to give the give them the only score of the game up to this point. But driving now at the Green County 35, facing first and 15. Robinson in the middle. Robinson corralled there and Franks part of that tackle again. We, we've been calling his name quite a bit. Absolutely. He's one of the guys that they're he's a sure tackler. He's a, he's a guy who you can tell, and I think, you, as you see, he's wherever Robinson is. He His uh, uh, assignment may be, you got Robinson today. Wherever he goes, you go. Robinson will come out on this play. As this time they go back to Phillips. Phillips, a little bit of change of pace, maybe uh, more of a speed type running back. And good yardage there. Sets up third and seven. Great play falling back uh, for Jarvis Wallace making a the tackle there. You see Knoxville County's kind of speeding this thing up. 
Again, Phillips. Phillips will try and stretch it out. Not going to get anywhere. Good tackle by Wallace as he came off from that end spot and tripped him up. There it is. Jarvis Wallace playing again. Great move playing with his hands. Don't let that guy get a hold of you. Your defensive lineman, use your hands to shed the block. That's the way to keep contained and not let him get outside. So after one quarter of play, Green County holding their own. They trail Noxaby County 8 to nothing here in the Class 4A championship game. Part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. One morning I was driving to work, all of a sudden I got this real bad headache. When Mary arrived, she was at death's doorstep. She had bled into her brain from a ruptured aneurysm. I was scared because I didn't know what was going on. We were able to quickly diagnose that, got her to our angio suite. I just went numb because you don't think of brain surgeries and success stories. They got in there and they did the surgery and I had my mom. I'm currently suffering from a severe traumatic brain injury. I just want to give up so bad, but I can't. I've got to fight on. This is a text message that caused a car accident that changed my life forever. MPB is committed to helping Mississippi stay healthy. Southern Remedy addresses health questions every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio and tackles issues such as obesity and teen pregnancy on MPB television. Ed Said encourages children to exercise and eat healthy foods with web-based music videos and with outreach events held throughout Mississippi. Chef Rob Stinson brings healthy recipes to your home with Fit to Eat Thursday nights on MPB television. Fresh local ingredients play a prominent role in these tasty and nutritious treats. Stay healthy with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Hi, this is Walt Grayson. Recently, we gave you, the viewer, the opportunity to select the very best of Mississippi roads. And you did just that. You went to MPB Online to cast your votes. Tallies were tabulated, chads were checked, and all the votes have been validated. But what stories were selected? Did your favorite make the selection? To discover the answer to these questions and more, tune in to a very special one-hour edition of Mississippi Roads. Sunday at 6 on MPB. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Class 4A championship action about to start the second quarter with Knoxby County on top of Greene County, 8 to nothing. But before we do, we want to send it down to the field and Kim Tanner. Thank you. With me I have John Sewell, who is the Director of Corporate Communications for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi and a sponsor here of this event. First, thank you, but tell us a little bit about how you all got involved and, and why you want to be a part of this great event. Well, we've had a partnership with MHSAA for a few years now, and we were given the opportunity to come in and invest with this partnership and take it to a new level, and we are so glad we did. There's nothing better than high school football on a day like this and a place like this. It's a gorgeous day, a great weekend. It's been fabulous games, and we just want to come out and, and celebrate this championship with these teams, uh, support these young men and these coaches who have worked so hard to get here, done a lot of hard workouts too. And, uh, you know, these guys are in great physical shape. We want to encourage them to keep that uh, throughout their lives and be role models for the kids and people in their communities as well. well. We thank you for what you do, and our viewers appreciate you making this possible. Thank, thank you. you. Travis. Thanks very much, Kim. As we return, a big fourth down here. Knoxby's going to go for it. Ballard back to pass over the middle of the field. Has a man, but the throw is a little bit too far. Was looking that time for Nathaniel Peterson. I think Knoxby got the look in the matchup they wanted. It's just a, uh, a poorly thrown ball over overrun. Here it is. Drop back, got the single coverage they were looking for. Just ball a little bit too long. So Green County is battling, you know, still keeping it at a one-score game. They've come up with some big stops here early on, but they haven't been able to generate any offense whatsoever, only two yards of offense in that first quarter of play. Woods will swing it out quickly. That pass caught. And not much doing there. But I, I like the look, though. Green County came in and said, look, we've been trying everything we can, running the ball out of traditional back set. Let's go empty, swing it out on a swing pass. That's nothing more than a, a design run, except without the handoff, it's a pass. So I, I, like the, I like the fact that they're switching it up. 
That time the pass over the middle, broken up, a good play made out there by Milan Robinson. Tell you what, Terrence Woods took a, a lick that time again by, by Dylan Bradley. He beat his man, came free. Woods stood in and, and delivered the ball. Unfortunately, his receiver couldn't hold on to it. So again, third and long. Looking for nine to pick up the first down. Wings it out. That one, again, intended for Petty, but off the mark, and Green County will be forced to punt. Absolutely. That was a quick series. They didn't get much out of it. Again, they're putting that defense back on the field and asking them to hold an explosive offense. So Petty will come in to punt, back deep to receive, will be Robinson as well as Antravion Jamison. Now Robinson will stand alone awaiting Petty's punt. He'll let it bounce and drop out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. And I want to let you know that this portion of the broadcast is being brought to you by Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. They're proud to grow peanuts, which provide plenty of energy for the viewing and playing of Mississippi's high school football. Jesse, it was interesting to see. It looked like Green County tried to make some adjustments there, throw the football, but those quick passes, because they know they're not giving Woods a lot of time, but that wasn't successful that time. We'll see if they have any more adjustments. But right now, Knox will be with the football and with the eight-point lead. And it looks like we have a penalty pre-snap. Knoxville, that series, they're coming out with a different formation and a little different look. Single back instead of the three back uh, set they've had. Put this offset their back and try to swing it out, get him on the edge with a uh, pitch quickly, but fortunately there's a penalty. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, first down. This Knoxby offense coming in averaging 35 points a game and well over 300 yards a contest. They were able to rack up only 59 yards of total offense in that first quarter. The bulk of those coming on the 40-yard scoring drive. So first and 15 now facing the Tigers. That give to Phillips going just about nowhere. He may pick up one. See what this Green County defense is stepping it up. It looks to see. It looks like they've taken the spark out of Knox County. Look, this straight handoff. Try to get the guard out front. Uh, you get some lead blocking, but this Green County defense isn't going. It's a Green County defense that very veteran oriented. Eight seniors that they start, and the other three are juniors. So all upperclassmen. They've played well so far. Second and fifteen. Ballard will look to throw. Avoids one tackle. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Ballard to the corner. Ballard reaches and is close to a first down. Actually, they're going to mark him out at about the 45-yard line, about four yards short of the first. Long extended play only results in five yards, but he does a great job from escaping from Wallace again. Gets out there. Now he has a decision to make to tuck it or throw it. He picked up five yards with what could have been a sack. So Robinson checks back in the game here on third and five. It'll be the deep back in a three back formation. And they'll give it to him. Robinson wow. cuts inside, has a hole to the outside before he's tripped at the 40 yard line. Daryl Robinson goes for 15 on third and five. I know we're going to give that run to Daryl Robinson, but he, he needs to go back to the hole and shake the hand of Fernando Phillips, who got great lead block on 12. Right there, he kicked Wallace out and opened the hole for Robinson just to run through. That's what you're looking for. Everybody committed to helping us win. Get your block. Get your man. I'll do the rest. Phillips not a, a typical lead blocker under 200 pounds, but he got the job done there. This time they give it up the middle. Javancy Jones able to squirt free and pick up about six on first down. There they are. Uh, the three back uh, set again with the power eye. Give it to the lead back. Let him get straight up the middle. Quick hitter. Get what he can. Good, what, six-yard run. 
And now you talk about that pace picks up. When you pick up good yardage and first downs, you can move a little bit quicker. This time, Robinson. Stiff arm. Avoids two tackles. Cut back. Wow. <laughs> Daryl Robinson inside the 25. Finally brought down by Smith. There you go. These guys playing smash mouth football. Daryl Robinson is trying to put the team on his shoulders and carry him. Great cut. He's not, he's, he's not going to be denied. Here it is. Great lead blocking right there. Both get two men. Thought Robinson's going down. Spins out of tackle. This kid wants it. He wants to get in that end zone for his 50th touchdown. Great play. Great finish. Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, Daryl Robinson picks up the first down. So they'll set up just inside the 25. Jones up the middle. Works his way forward for a gain of about two. Great stop by number 52, the middle linebacker, Clifton Robinson. That's what you got to do. Take care of your responsibility. Middle linebacker, your first job is to take care of the middle. Stop the dive. Let everybody else do their job. Great stop. There he is, shedding, up, shedding the block. They actually played him up on the line that time. This time, it looks like Ballard is able to get Green County to jump. Smith coming over the line too early. So that'll be five yards as the Tigers will move into the red zone. It's tough. You can't get Knox Ball. County in. Offside on the defense. Five yards. Second down. Green County can't afford to give him anything, Travis. Very methodical drive here being put on by Knoxby County. They now go inside the 20. And on second and short, they give it to Robinson. Robinson, though, corral. Not much doing there. A good stop that time by Hartfield. Absolutely. Green County made the adjustment. That was the same play with your two power backs leading, blocking. They have to, here's the problem on that play. The two backs are getting the same guy right there. The last two times, they're trying to kick out the defensive end. One of them has to go up to the second level and get a linebacker. On third down, Robinson. Again, Robinson fights forward. He will be close to the first down. McDonald coming up to make the stop. The sticks are at the 14. The ball is at the 14. And they'll bring in the chains to get a look at this one. No matter what, I, I'm going to imagine Coach Shorter will go for it if they come up short. Absolutely. I, I think you're in four-down territory. In Knoxville County, you have an explosive offense. Defense has been playing great. And you're in a big game. But he won't have to make that decision because Robinson picked up the necessary yardage. It'll be a first and 10 for the Tigers at the 14. See Robinson kind of limping over there. <clears throat> that thought may be bothering yeah, him. Yeah, he, he's battling it, and he'll probably be battling it all day. Be interesting to see his coach shorter. If he goes back in or they're going with somebody else, I think he's going back in. Coach Shorter, a longtime assistant for Knoxville County, was on the sidelines when they won a state championship back in 2008, but looking for his first as a head coach. And they'll go right back to Robinson. And Robinson not going anywhere, though. Green County stiffening up down here. That was a great play by number 18, uh, Seth Walters for Green County. He came up. He had a decision to make to take on the backs and skirt it. There it is at both of the backs. He came right around two lead backs to get to uh, Robinson. Great play. You can either go through them or you can go around them. As long as you get there, coach is happy. Line up in that three back set again. Smash mouth football. And they'll go with Robinson into the middle of the field. He's flipped over at the nine yard line. So that'll set up third down. Number 45, Caleb Smith again. The inside backer. He's a guy who has a nose for the ball. So quickly, the Tigers back to the line. Third and five, three back set. Ballard pitch Robinson. He's going to stretch to the right. And he is tripped up short of the first down. Another good play. And there's that man, Jarvis Wallace. There he is. 
Well, I said, look, you may run that other end, but when it comes around this end, I'm going to keep my contain, and I'm going to fall back and make the play. It's a great job by the defense. And look at him use his hand. Number 40 is there to block him. He takes on two blockers, fall back inside to make the tackle. That's all you can ask for for your defense then. Coach Shorter, no hesitation to send the offense on fourth down. And they'll give it to Robinson. Robinson fighting, pushing, stretches out. I don't know if he got there. I don't think he made it. It was great penetration by Shaquille Franks and the rest of that Greene County defense. This is going to be really close. He got it just inside the five-yard line. And again, we're going to have a measurement. Been really impressed with the fundamentals of this Green County defense, especially. They are undersized compared to Knoxville County, but they're able to read well and, and they've made a lot of good plays. And they made a huge fourth down play there, stopping Knoxville near the end zone. Travis, that's the thing. If you don't have uh, you know, outstanding talent, you can make up for it with great coaching and kids buying into your system and just doing their job and handling their responsibility. So a long, time-consuming drive results in nothing for Knoxville County. They're just clinging to that 8 to nothing lead here with under six minutes to go in the second quarter. Now, Green County will take over in the shadow of their end zone. Woods gives to Marco Franks, but before the play got started, we have a penalty. Yeah, I think this was going to be on Green County. It's tough. You already backed up in the end zone, and you have an explosive player on the defensive side of the ball. This could get dangerous. That will, it'll send him half the distance to the goal line. And first start on the offense. Half the distance, first start. Coach Ainsworth looking for answers how to get this offense to move the football. Only one first down so far and in a really tight spot right here. Woods will take the snap a few yards deep into the end zone. Hear that Tiger crowd come alive. Woods will keep it himself. A little bit of running room. Out past the 10 and room to breathe there for Green County. That was a great play. I was watching Dylan Bradley on that play and his aggression kind of took him out the play. You'll see he, he's in a five, wide five. He comes up the field and the, the lead black get the back gets just enough on him and the, the quarterback goes right inside. You know what's amazing is he blew past the play, yeah. but then caught up to make the play. Here, Green County going deep, and the wow. pass is batted away. And Travian Jamison, good closing speed to knock that one down. Travis, I love that call. You backed up in your end zone. Third and four. Uh, let's go for it. Let's take up. Sorry, second and four. Let's take a shot deep. Especially with uh, Knoxville County playing aggressive up in your, in your face football. Uh oh, wow. Snap is mishandled. Ball down on the field. And the Knoxville County player has it. We haven't seen the signal yet. And somehow Green County retains possession of that. Woods was able to get back on top of it. So the Wildcats avoid disaster there and this was bad from the get-go. Yeah, I, th I think the, uh, Woods wasn't looking for the ball. It was snapped. It hit him directly in the hands, but he just couldn't handle it. Big break for Green County to get out of there without turning the ball over. So we'll have to send Petty in to punt. And he'll be standing in his end zone when he takes the snap, going back deep for Knoxby. It's not going to be Robinson this time. Instead, they're going to send Jamison. Petty's punt will take a good bounce. Jamison will field it at the 44. Nowhere to go. Good special teams coverage and about as well as Green County could have hoped for on that possession. Absolutely. I think the Green County... <laughs> 
offense needs to give uh, the Greene County defense and special teams a big hand going into the locker room. I mean, these guys are playing solid. They're keeping an explosive offense under control, and they're doing just enough not to give up any more points. And again, we've talked about it. Greene County is used to playing from behind. You go just a week ago, they were down 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter of the South State Finals equipment, able to come back and win that in double overtime. So they've been in this position before. They're going to try and keep the lead, though, at eight, winding down here in the first half. The first down give to Phillips, and he fights forward to the 40. Absolutely. It's, it's great. I see that the Green County defense, is not they're not putting as many men in a box anymore. I think Coach Ainsworth is getting comfortable with his defensive line and his, his linebackers just standing in there and, and stopping the run. Once again, Phillips to carry. Phillips fights forward to the 35-yard line, so that'll bring up a third and short. You see that uh, Coach Shorter, they've gone back to that. Uh, it's not a hurry-up offense, but it's more speed. It, it's a little bit more uh, speedy offense, getting their guys to the line, calling plays from the sideline, and trying to take advantage of this Green County, get them out of, out of position. Another inside give. The running back tripped up close to the first down. Devontae Scott getting his hands on the ball that time. Yeah, uh, great play by Caleb Smith. He was there, took on the blocker, and got enough momentum and knocked the blocker back in, in, in back of the running back and uh, took him down. Great play by an aggressive, solid linebacker. And that stop keeps not to be short of the first down. So, again, they're facing fourth down. Another huge play here. In the first half, they were unable to convert on their last drive down inside the five. Now they're inside the 35, going forward again. Inside get out. Scott, nowhere to go, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. It'll be interesting to see where they spot it. Mr. Franks again. That's a big time play. 12 and 35 again. Uh, Wallace and Franks. Just getting penetration. Beat, beat not to be counted to the point of attack. And they don't even need to bring the chains out. It's a turnover on downs. Second straight series. And not to be counting has been stopped in Green County territory on fourth down. Great penetration. I mean, Roberts was in there at the snap of the ball. That's what you got to have. Short yardage. You playing a running team, you got to play on their side of the line. Not good enough to play on your side line. If you're the defense, you want to get on the other side of that offensive lineman and wreck havoc in the backfield. So Woods drops back to pass on first down. Slings it out. Really tight coverage out there as the pass is broken up on that play. Dennis Brooks made a good play. That was solid coverage all the way around. You know, we haven't talked about it much, but that Knoxville secondary has been Lockdown so far. Woods again looking to pass. Set up the screen. Have it over the middle to Petty. Petty's got a first down and more out to midfield. And how do you combat speed? Well, you give them a little bit of a different look and you draw the rushers in and you throw the wide receiver screen. That's exactly it. You get an aggressive defense, the thing you can do is beat them with the screen. They get all four of the D linemen up the field, throw the, the screen underneath. But I tell you what, Bradley came back and tracked the ball down. That's what you want. Now Frank's trying to get to the outside. Looked like he had a chance there, but cuts it back up the middle. And he'll go down at the 47, pick up of about four. Knoxley has speed on the defensive side of the ball, as well as offensive side of the ball. I like the fact that Green County's kind of speeding things up right here. Trying to take advantage of the little momentum they have. Just over two minutes to go in this first half of action. On second down, Woods rolls right, pressure, pass, just a little bit too high, intended for Crumpton. That's a good play call, but you got two free running defensive linemen, kind of makes it hard on Terrence Woods to sit back in there and throw an accurate ball. Getting a look at Deshaun Hopkins there, he's a a beached whale out on that field 367 pounds and he's a force so again they go screen on third down. 
That's how you handle the screen. Right there. That receive, if they're going to run that screen, uh, Jeremy Hunt comes up, makes a great play. If they're going to run that screen, you make that receiver think about it. You're going to run back into traffic and go get that ball. We're going to make you pay for it. Woods left it a little bit too high for McCann, and he did pay for it. But on fourth down, the offense stays on the field. Looks like Coach Ainsworth is going to think about this one. going to let the time wind down and go ahead and take his first time out of the first half. So it's fourth and six. Green County just on the other side of midfield. Their first real drive of the game. But again, they're only down by a score. And probably it's closer than a lot of people would have thought at this point. I think you're right, Travis. You got a lot of people who thought that uh, Knoxville County would come in here and just handle Green County. But Green County is playing solid defense and they're playing team ball. You can own your own keepsake from this exciting matchup as well as all the other state championship games. Just log on to MISSHSAANetwork.com and you can purchase a DVD copy of all these games. All right, Jesse, do you punt it, try and pin Knox to be deep and make him drive with under two minutes to go, or do you go for it? I think you have to punt it. I think your defense is playing solid. Show some confidence in your defense. Punt the ball. Maybe something happens. Maybe you get a muff, uh, a, a drop punt, or maybe you get a great defensive stand and give you a few uh, minutes or seconds to come back and try to get three points or seven. That's exactly what Coach Ainsworth will do. He will send in the punting unit. Petty gets this one off and angles it to the sideline it'll kick out of bounds at the 28 yard line and that's where Knoxby County will take over 148 to play Tigers up eight to nothing didn't really see Robinson on that last series I don't know if they were trying to give him a little bit of a, a breather as he's been dealing with that thigh injury all game but he is taking the field this time he's had a good first half he hasn't had a great first half and that's the thing about a, uh, a, a deep tissue bruise like that you know the more you go the more you play the tighter it gets so but you want to keep him out there to get everything you can out of him but the longer he goes the stiffer it's going to get he's already had 18 carries 74 yards so far this is carry number 19 and making a few moves made something out of nothing there out to the 35 yard line picks up seven yeah, that was a play that should have been stopped for probably a one-yard gain, if any. But he was able to make a good read and good cutback. Here you go. We got Wallace playing good, good, great position. These guys are coming to the ball, but uh, Darrell won't be denied. Great cutback, great vision. Robinson, again this time, another great cut. Picks up the first down, out past the 45. Tell you what, you keep picking up first down, that thigh starts to bother you a little bit less. <laughs> So the clock will stop as they move the chains. And Knoxby will be right there on top of the ball. Robinson, again, up the middle. Robinson cuts it outside. Another good stiff arm, and he won't go down. Has to be forced out inside the 45, close to another Tiger first down. I'll tell you what, you got to wonder how much that thigh uh, is playing a role in this game. He looked like he could have done something else with it. There it is. He, he has to give great stiff arm. Just turn on the speed. I mean, he looked as if, man, I, I could have stepped over that guy to get a little extra yard, maybe going for a touchdown. But you can tell that thigh is starting to have a, a, a mental effect on uh, Daryl Robinson. Picks up nine. So on second down, they're going to take a shot. Ballard deep down the field. Has a receiver in and out of the hands. That would have been a touchdown for Jesse Bryant if he could have held on. Wow, it was a well-thrown ball. Well-thrown ball. Bryant just couldn't hold on to it. That's what Knoxville does. They get you here. Drop back pass. I like the call. Ball's in the air. The rule is, as a receiver, if it hits your fingertips, you're supposed to catch it. Especially in the big game. The coaches want you, please, man, come down with that one. Threw him a bone, you know. <laughs> Jesse Bryan didn't get too many uh, attempts at it, but Tigers still able to pick up the first down on third and short. They just go with the up man, Jones. So down inside the 40, 
Under a minute to go now. And no real rush because they still have three timeouts to go. Tell you what, Travis, even way up here, you can tell this is a physical game. You can hear the pads popping. Green County is not laying down. They're coming and being physical and playing Green County football, which is hard-nosed football. There is another uh, football game going on at the same time that some folks in the South might be interested in. And just a quick update, Georgia has gone on top of Alabama 7 to nothing in the second quarter of the SEC championship game. But here we have a first and 10 for Knoxby inside the Green County 40-yard line. This is an interesting call. You got 58 seconds left on the clock. You know, what, what are, you, are, are you trying to get in position to kick a field goal? I doubt that with Coach Shorter. Coach Shorter wants to get in the, in the end zone. Do you go back with uh, Robinson or do you put the ball in the air and try to get a quick strike? You know, they haven't thrown too many passes, but they've had a couple opportunities. You had the one to Bryant there. You had another one earlier down the middle of the field in the end zone where Ballard was just a little bit long on the pass. But both of those guys were wide open, so the chances have been there if you can just make the throws. On first down, Ballard will look to throw. He's going to have to avoid pressure. Can't. Brought down by Clifton Roberts. Great play by Clifton Roberts. That's the way you come up the middle, get some pressure. That deep, by the defensive tackle. Inside guy, I like it. Look at him, great hands, great use of his hands. Now you come back and just, you got your prey and your target, take him down. Ballard might have out-juked himself. Roberts just stayed on a straight line, <laughs> and Ballard was sitting there waiting for him as he danced back and forth. There you go, big man. Get you some. Clifton Roberts, his fifth sack on the season and that's a huge one loss of almost 10 yards it's gonna be second in 19 51 seconds to go in the first half and it's amazing to look at this Greene County team that finished third in their region so they were forced to go on the road right away in the playoffs and had to win a couple of playoff games on the road just to get to this point well, are you a high school sports fan? Join the conversation about high school sports, not only right here in Mississippi, but all across the country. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Play on Sports. And check out PlayOnSports.com for a comprehensive state-by-state -state regular season and championship coverage. Second and 19 for Knoxby County. Ballard straight back. Now he'll dance out to the right. Looks for blockers down the field as he tucks it and runs and does the smart thing to get out of bounds after he picks up about six. You got to give, again, there's Jarvis Wallace. I know he doesn't make a sack, but he had solid defense to force the quarterback to not, not to be able to cut it upfield and make some things happen, but to force him to the sideline. As a defensive end, use the sideline as your friend. Most time those Quarterbacks may be a little faster than you, but keep inside leverage, force them to the sideline. There we go, third and 15. 42 seconds to go in the first half. Bow in the pocket, wings it across the middle of the field. Pass is caught there by Bryant, but He'll be a few yards shy of the first down. Knoxby will have to hurry here. Under 30 seconds to go. Green County's playing a zone. Let's see if can Knoxby take advantage of that. High snap. Ballard able to tip it to himself. Dancing. Looking. Pass. Too high. And incomplete. They'll turn it over on downs again. Green County comes up with a stop. Green County's doing just enough to make it happen uh, every series. You know, I, I know Knoxville's a little disappointed. They're used to putting points on the board, but Green County's doing just enough, and Knoxville's really not putting that much pressure on them uh, to, to, to really make them uh, play a perfect game. I mean, Green County has to be happy with where they are right now. Absolutely, especially after that early touchdown. Looked like that Knoxville train would get moving, but Green County has stopped it. In the, in the meantime, so 
13 seconds to go. They'll be happy to take a knee and go to the half down eight to nothing. So the Wildcats going toe to toe with the number one team in class 4A and they'll get the ball to start the second half as well. Some definitely momentum on the side of Greene County though. Meanwhile, Knoxville does have the lead at eight to nothing thanks to a Fernando Phillips touchdown. We haven't seen our guy Darrell Robinson, excuse me, Darrell Robinson reach the end zone yet, but he did have a big first half even while battling that thigh injury. Here in just a few moments, our Kim Tanner is going to track down Coach Shorter for Knoxaby County and get his thoughts on the first half of action. And coming up at halftime, we will have a look at bands from both schools and some stats as well from the first half of play. It looks like Kim has corralled Coach Shorter, and we will send it down to her. Coach, a very physical defensive first half. What kind of adjustments do you need to make to get your offense more effective? Well, the engine buzz and the hitters. Um, the running back got hurt. Um, both my running backs hurt, so the engine buzz just to hit us a little, but we just got to make some adjustments and, um, um, and just try to make some adjustments. Uh, Green County have a good football team, and uh, we just got to go in and regroup and, and make some adjustments on offense. Uh, hopefully we can just stay healthy on defense, but right now we just banged up so bad on, on offense right now, and it's hurting us. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Good luck. Well, he said it right there. Those injuries are playing a role in uh, their offense not being as productive as they have been all season. Still saying that, though, Knoxville County leads Greene County 8 to nothing at halftime of this Class 4A state championship game, all part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi Red Iron Classic. Mississippi's 15 community colleges teach and train approximately 250,000 of our citizens in the course of an average year. Nearly 68% of all college freshmen in our state attend a community college. Average tuition and required fees for the academic year are just $2,242. A community college is close to wherever you live. Community colleges provide education and workforce training to help us build job skills. Community colleges in our second century making a difference in the lives of Mississippians. On November 22nd, 1981, the Rolling Stones joined Muddy Waters on stage at a small club in Chicago. Relive this intimate night of blues and rock icons. Don't miss Muddy Waters and the Rolling Stones, live at the Checkerboard Lounge. Thursday at 7 on MPB. Legendary rocker Rod Stewart comes to great performances with his first ever holiday special. Merry little Christmas. With guests Mary J. Blige, Michael Bublé, CeeLo Green, and more. Enjoy Rod Stewart in this swinging Yuletime treat. Merry Christmas, baby. Sure to treat me nice. Merry Christmas, baby, from great performances. Tuesday at 8.30 on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. E-learning for educators in partnership with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Improved teacher knowledge. Improved teaching practices. Increased student achievement. Online professional development for educators. Earn CEU credit. Fits easily in your schedule from the convenience of your home. Register for courses now at www.mpbonline.org. Inspired teaching, inspiring students. It is halftime here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Knoxby County up on Green County, 8 to nothing in the Class 4A championship. Right now we want to send you down to the field, though, and give you a chance to check out the band from Green County.
at halftime here of the Class 4A championship game. The Greene County Band is finishing up their performance. Get a little Michael Jackson action going here. Their team trails 8 to nothing. We will hear from the Tiger Band coming up in just a little bit on the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. Right now, though, we want to send it down to the sidelines and Kim Tanner standing by with a special guest. Thank you very much. With me, Richard Fleming, the superintendent from Greene County Schools, and we're enjoying this band. They're doing such a great job. Tell me a little bit about your community and how they've supported your school in being here today. Well, you can probably just look right across the field right now and see most of our community. I think we've got a couple people left in town, and both of them are guarding the bank. <laughs> but uh, we have really enjoyed it up here. Don Hinton and the Activity Association do a first-class job, and uh, we are just excited to be back again and proud of our Wildcats right now. Well, this has been a, a, an inspirational season for your team and, and for your coach and the family and the way the, the community has surrounded them as well. A absolutely. Coach Ainsworth has, has struggled with health problems all through the year, and our coaching staff staff and kids have supported him and been behind him and, and absolutely done a lot of things to, to get us where we are right now. And, and our kids play so hard for Coach Ainsworth. And, and uh, it's just a, it, it gives you a good feeling inside to know that we have had such a good success story this year. Well, congratulations on being here. Good luck in the second half. And I greatly appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, Kim. You. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Kim. Greene County trailing Knoxby County 8 to nothing at halftime here, the Class 4A championship game. Brought to you by the MHSAA Network. The 2012 Gridiron Classic is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Now more than ever, it's good to be blue. Bank Plus. It's more than a name. It's a promise. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company. An energy for the Mississippi High School Football Championships. Brought to you by Mississippi Peanut Growers Association. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. What if Eli Manning had never played football? Thanks, keep saying. Sweet. Hi. Even if Eli wasn't a star, he'd still be treated like one at Bank Plus. Hey, you forgot my breadsticks. Bank Plus. It's more than a name. It's a promise. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. It is halftime here at the Class 4A Championship game. Knoxby County on top of Greene County, 8 to nothing. And uh, right now we're going to give you a chance to listen in on the Tiger Band from Knoxby.
band performing here at halftime. I want to send it back down to Kim, who's with an official from Knoxville County. Kim? Thank you. First, the superintendent, Kevin Jones, is with me. We were talking a little bit about the great turnout they've had here today. How about the community? Have they been behind you this week? The community week? has been behind us 110%. They have been very supportive all year long. Any needs that the school district was unable to meet, the community came right on in and stepped in and helped us. They gave us a great send-off, and as you can see, they're here supporting today. Uh, our student athletes and our coaches have done an outstanding job all year long, and we're so proud of our community, and we most certainly are proud of this team. They've come a long way, and they have represented Knoxville County well, and we really appreciate their hard work, their effort, and dedication, and we're here to support them today. Well, I'm sure it's hard to keep this kind of excitement harnessed at school this week. Uh, tell me a little bit, please, uh, with me, of course, is, is Hattie Thomas, the principal. How did you keep them calm during uh, test time? Well, we have a very focused group of students. They know that academics is first and foremost, and they are always aware that they must do well academically. We have the support of um, Mr. Shorter, who's the head coach. He always encouraged the young men to stay focused in the classroom and to do their very best. Some of the uh, athletes who are playing here today are honor students. They are they are. Uh, star student. We have one student here who's a star student. We have students who take the higher math courses, the higher science courses. They have competed in robotics, in the robotics competition. So they are not only athletically focused, they're also academically focused. We have a great group of young people. Well, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on being here this weekend. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Kim. It is time to take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Let's check out some of the highlights. This, the only touchdown of the game in the first quarter, Fernando Phillips breaks free and gets to the end zone. Absolutely. Fernando Phillips does a great job of breaking a few tackles and turning on the speed to get to the corner of the end zone. Right, here you get a look at Mr. Daryl Robinson. 21 carries over 102 he had 102 yards, but huge defensive stops down inside the 10-yard line for Green County. That's been the theme for them, stopping Knoxaby on fourth down. Travis, the Green County defense has stepped up at every turn except for the Fernando Phillips touchdown. You see Franks right here. He's been playing big when they needed him to third downs and fourth downs. Franks has been stepping up, and uh, Shaquille Franks has been stepping up for Green County, making huge plays. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi halftime stats, and there are some pretty telling ones, even though the score doesn't necessarily reflect it. Most of the numbers favor Knoxby County. The rush yards, the time of possession, that jumps out at you. Absolutely does. 15 minutes compared to 8 minutes. Another thing, I mean, if you just looked at the uh, total yards, you'll have almost seven times the total yards for Knoxby County as you do Green County, but only an 8 uh, 0. Um, only at 8-0 score here. And one of the most telling stats on there, 0-4 on fourth downs for Knoxby County. That's why they only hold this 8 to nothing lead. One more time, we want to check in with Kim down on the sidelines. Thank you. With me is Lonnie Tillman. He is associate director, associate director yes. at the Mississippi High School Activities Association. One of the guys in charge of making this event happen this weekend. And you all have done, a once again, a fabulous job. Well, thanks, Kim. Uh, it's been very exciting. Uh, we had a great turnout this week. Um, uh, great community support and everything. A lot of people showed up, and so uh, our corporate sponsors are putting on a great event. Uh, Farm Bureau out there having a tailgate party, and a lot of uh, customers out there visiting with them. So it's been a great weekend. The weather's cooperated with us, and uh, we're just thankful for it. Well, you all always do such a great job in, in giving these kids an opportunity to show their talent on the field, and we appreciate you. Yes, and, and it's a great uh, platform for our kids to perform, and uh, we're just uh, glad to be part of it. It's very, very exciting. Everybody should come at least once to, to enjoy the events. I tell you, I think they were all here last night. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there was, we had a great crowd last night, one of the, one of the best we had so far. Well, we're going to have some great football coming up for you in just a minute, so uh, stick around. We'll give it back to you in the booth. Yeah, we should have a great second half in store for us. A one-score ball game. Knoxville County holding eight to nothing lead on Greene County. When we return, we will have the second half of this Class 4A championship, part of the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. I'm currently suffering from a severe traumatic brain injury. 
I just want to give up so bad, but I can't. I've got to fight on. This is a text message that caused a car accident that changed my life forever. MPB is committed to helping Mississippi stay healthy. Southern Remedy addresses health questions every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio and tackles issues such as obesity and teen pregnancy on MPB television. Ed Said encourages children to exercise and eat healthy foods with web-based music videos and with outreach events held throughout Mississippi. Chef Rob Stinson brings healthy recipes to your home with Fit to Eat Thursday nights on MPB television. Fresh local ingredients play a prominent role in these tasty and nutritious treats. Stay healthy with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. It's about a passion and an ingenuity in our employees that is unparalleled. They represent a a passion for what they do. This is not about any one person. It's about a group of individuals all working together to make a company. Sunday at 1 p.m. on MPB. Legendary rocker Rod Stewart comes to great performances with his first ever holiday special. Merry little Christmas. With guests Mary J. Blige, Michael Bublé, CeeLo Green, and more. Enjoy Rod Stewart in this swinging Yule Time treat. Merry Christmas, baby. Sure to treat me Merry Christmas, baby, from great performances. Tuesday at 8.30 on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of the MHSAA football tournament on MPB is made possible in part by Chimneyville Smokehouse, smoking Mississippi since 1989. Applebee's, what can you do in 12 minutes? How about lunch at Applebee's? Soul Shine Pizza Factory, feel the love. And Mama Hamels, serving up scrumptious southern comfort food. The MHSAA. Eight to nothing, Knoxville County on top of Greene County. We're getting set for the second half of action, and you see Daryl Robinson getting set, Jesse. He's been battling that injury uh, to his right thigh the whole first half, but even through that, carried the ball 21 times. He's over 100 yards, maybe doesn't have that explosiveness, but he's been tough. Absolutely. You know, that, that thigh's going to bother him. And halftime, is, is, this is the tell. How he looks coming back out at, after halftime. Did he get it stretched? Did he get some heat on it to keep it loose? I mean, this is a determined kid who's at the state championship and wants to bring his trophy home uh, to his team. Green County has battled, and they are right in this game, and we want to see what they have in store in the second half. And it's Kim and Coach Ainsworth. Play the same. We played we played really hard the first half. They got an outstanding football team. We know we're just one score, score away, one play away. So, you know, we, we hopefully our kids, we're going to play four quarters. We played four weeks for four quarters, so we don't expect any different. Uh, you know, we had our crowd. We just proud of our crowd coming up for Green County. Uh, I don't think anybody's left in Green County. But, uh, you know, four more, we got one more half. And that's what we've been coaching, teaching all year. You know, it takes four quarters of football. We got two more to go. Good luck, Coach. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Cam. And you look at the road that Greene County took to get here, as we said earlier in the broadcast, third place in that region. So they had to go to Laurel in the first round of the playoffs. They win there in convincing fashion. The next round, they host, but they take on a Tyler Town team that many considered the favorite in South 4A, and they take care of the Chiefs, and then back on the road, they win by two points at Bay High, and then down 14 points in the fourth quarter last week to Quitman, only to come back, force double overtime, and win on a field goal there, 24-21. So an amazing run for Greene County throughout this state tournament run. I want to remind you to be strong, be healthy, and be blue. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi, it is good to be blue. And the boys in blue will have to kick off to start the second half. Knoxby won the toss. 
they accepted. And so now Greene County will get the football first. And for them, Jesse, how do they get that offense going? The defense has answered every call, but the offense hasn't been able to generate much. I think you're going to see them come and do some of the things they did at the end of the half. That means go with some empty backfield sets because they've been trying to just pound the ball up the middle and Knoxville County, they're not having it. You're going to see them get the ball out on the edges, maybe some bubble screens, maybe some uh, tosses, but they have to try to find something that'll work and get the ball moved down the field. Yeah, only 27 yards of total offense in that first half. Kickoff will be taken deep there by McCann. McCann into the middle of the field. McCann breaks free and a nice return out past the 40. Special teams can help as well, too, and a nice play there by Tyler McCann. Absolutely. Special teams can play a big part for you in a game like this. They can either hurt you or really help you. All right, this is the last quarter you can get involved in the Text to Win contest. Show your spirit by texting your school's keyword to 4678. Knoxby County, your keyword is Gridiron 8. Green County, your keyword is Gridiron 7. Most votes at the end of the game, that school will receive a $1,000 donation from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. There's the first down run there by Frankson. Green County riding that momentum into Tiger territory. Absolutely. You see LaMarcus Frank shifts into the little pistol position and gets the ball, and he just hits it straight ahead right off the tackle. It's the way to start uh, coming out the second half. So a gain of eight. This time, an inside give. Not much to do there for Woolyard, but maybe picked up a yard. It'll set up a third and short. Travis, as you'll see, they tried to go back to the same play just the other side, and uh, it wasn't having it. Right here, he shifts in position. Same play, try to run off tackle. Great penetration. Take on the, the lead guy. You shove the lead guy in the backfield, the running back has nowhere to go. Javancy Jones coming up with a big hit there. They will go ahead and measure this one. And the chains will show that Green County is just short. Less than a football, it looks like. So we'll face a third down here. You know, Marco Franks, we, we highlighted him early in the broadcast. Came into this game over 1,600 yards on the ground. He's been the workhorse, but really been bottled up, held to 20 yards in that first half. Yeah, they haven't gone to him much, um, they, they, but they're trying to get him the ball in a few different looks. If you get him the ball, he can make something happen. But I tell you, this Knoxville County defense is talented. So we are set. Handoff can't be handled. And Woods just lucky to get back on the football, but he's going to lose four yards. Saw something similar happen uh, earlier. Just Woods can't handle the ball. It's, it snapped directly to him. It's maybe a little hot snap, but he can't handle it, and it, it cost him opportunity for a first down. Woods will stay on the field. We've seen him punt out of this formation earlier in the game, but this time they're going to go. Woods up the middle. He'll work his way forward and does pick up a first down. Gutsy call. It's a gutsy call, but this is what you're down 8 nothing. coming back out at, at, at the half. You need something to happen for you. Let's go to your guy who we said had to have a big game, and that's Woods. There he is, direct snap. Just hits it right off uh, at the outside of his center. Picks up a huge first down. Wildcats riding that wave of momentum, and that's only going to help. Now they're going to go to the air. Woods up top, pass deep downfield, and it's going to be almost intercepted, but the flag is down, and I think we're going to have pass interference, it looks like, on Dennis Brooks. I think so. I think Dennis, he, he got beat, but he was trying to recover, and as he recovered, the receiver's trying to make a play back on the ball, ran into him, 15-yard penalty. And you know the thing, he may not have even 
needed to make contact because he had safety help over the top from Entravion Jamison, who almost made the pick, but the contact was made earlier by Brooks. Absolutely. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards, first down. And you see right there, receiver didn't even get a chance to come back and make a play on the ball after he was knocked down. McCann trying to go after it. But anyways, first down inside the 30 now for the Cats. Inside give, running room. Warrior inside the 20, down to the 15. Great play. That's that play that they went to earlier with Franks, and he picked up a huge play. Here, yeah, You got number 19 running it the opposite way with Woolard. You see, they're getting back up to the line and trying to run another play. Quick tempo here. Franks inside give. Franks has room up the middle. Inside the 10, fighting his way near the 5. And Green County is cranking now. I think Green County thinks they found something with trying to hit the edges. They can't do it up the middle like they tried the first half. So now they're putting their backs and trying to get them outside on the edges. And it's working right now. So nine yards for number nine on that first down carry. Second and one, deepest penetration of the day for the Cats. Same look, the Woods will keep this time. Woods fights forward. Maybe got a yard as he is met in the hole by a host of Tigers led by Martiz Mitchell. I tell you what, Travis, it's not a bad play. As, as a coach, you call that play and you watch the defensive ends and the outside backers and see how they react. They all went into the uh, and got the quarterback. Maybe look for something on the edge. Everybody went in and took the dive with the quarterback up the middle. Maybe look for something on the edge again. Third and less than a yard. Franks into the middle. Franks forward to the one. First down. There he is. I think Franks is finding his groove. We said they had to starting the game they had to get that one two punch with Woods and Franks going here it is Woods handing the ball off to Franks Franks just reading his blocks and taking what they give him looks like his knee went down a little bit earlier so the ball placed on the two still a first down nonetheless Franks again into a mass of bodies and nowhere to move for him he'll just be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage yeah, Knoxville County lined up then with nine men in the box. I mean, you, you had nobody. Only people you had that uh, wasn't in the box were the two cornerbacks. Well, and Hopkins is two men himself <laughs> in there. Big nose guard inside. Let's see Dylan Bradley come up with a big play here. Bobcats shift the formation. Woods, Franks again. Wow. Javoris Glenn. Came with the thunder there. That's what you need. As a defensive player, when you're backed up to your goal line, somebody has to make a play on the other side of the ball. And, and there it was, right there. Javaris Glenn coming down. Hey, the offensive lineman doesn't get there quick enough, and he makes him pay. I would have been one of those where Woods maybe should have kept it himself and then tried to skirt to the outside, but now it's third and goal. Again, Franks, and again, nothing. The Tiger defense comes up stout. I mean, they're putting nine guys in the box and saying, Woods, if you're going to beat us, if you're going to score, you're going to have to do it with your arm. Knoxville County isn't going to look at all those guys up on the line of scrimmage. Great penetration. Man, there he is, Dylan Bradley. He just overpowered Lil Willard. Uh, Willard. Willard can't block that guy. He's giving up about 150 pounds. So Green County will take a timeout. They face fourth and goal from just inside the five-yard line. Do they go for it, or do they try and kick a field goal and put points on the board? This is the closest that Green County's gotten to the end zone all day. Down by eight points. I think you may see Coach Angsworth going for it. But you have an 8-0 game. A field goal gives you an opportunity if you can come back and get a touchdown for the win. So... It's his call. You know, earlier uh, in the season, they had to go to their backup field goal kicker, Dalton Ezel, after Luke Hicks went down 
with a torn knee in the ninth game. And Hicks was also their best receiver at the time, so that was a big loss for the Wildcats. But saying that, Ezel did kick the game winner in double overtime last week. So he's made pressure kicks before, but it looks like Woods and the offense will come back out. And there you get a look at Bradley, who's going to be chomping at the bit on this play. The numbers are remarkable for what he's done this season. He is the he's the fiery leader of that unit, and they're facing their biggest play of the game right now on fourth and goal. You see them run a little motion to try to see if the defense will give away what they're going to do. Are they going to blitz and sit back and play? Here you go. Coach taking another time out. So Johnny Ainsworth going to bring his guys back over to the huddle. Reassess what they're going to do on this fourth down play. Just over seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Knoxby County up eight to nothing. They scored early in the first quarter, and it's been a defensive slugfest since then. You can own your own keepsake from this exciting 4A matchup as well as the other state championship games going on this weekend. All you need to do is log on to M-I-S-S-H-S-A-A-Network.com and there you can purchase a DVD copy of all the action. So Coach Ainsworth is going to send the offense back onto the field. Again, fourth and goal just inside the five. Woods gives to Franks. Franks spins. Franks into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, we got a lot of flags on the field. All those flags came right at the same time. Think it might be on Knoxby the way the Wildcat players are reacting. And the call down there looks like a face mask. What a gutsy call. They almost go to the exact same play, but the execution better that time for Green County. They call it the exact same play, but they go right into it. You expect them to run away from Dylan uh, Bradley, but they go right they go right at him. And uh, turns the corner. Franks finds uh, the hole. He presses it into the end zone. Now, here's a question. Go for the eight, you kick the field goal. So the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The ball is still going to be spotted at the three-yard line, and it looks like Woods and the offense are on the field to go for two and the tie. Woods will keep it himself. Woods! She didn't make it. Stretches, but it looks like he's going to come up just short. For a moment, I thought he had a, an alley to get through, but it closed quickly. And Terrence Woods stopped short on the two-point conversion. Knoxby maintains their 8-6 to six lead. Got great pursuit from Mitchell and Bradley on that play. Down the line. You know, it, it looked like it was there. He had the momentum going in, but they got great pursuit down the line and was able to keep him out the end zone. That could prove to be a very, very critical play later on in this one. 8-6, to six, the new score as Greene County is on the board. And we got us a football game. I think there were a few people predicting this one to be out of hand by this point, but that is absolutely not the case. We've got a lot to look forward to the next quarter and a half. Once again, show your spirit by texting your, sco your school's keyword to 46786. Knoxby County, this is your keyword, gridiron8. Green County, your keyword is Gridiron 7. The school with the most votes at the end of the game will win a $1,000 donation from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. Your standard text messaging rates do apply. One vote per phone will be counted. So Green County is on the board. They go 12 plays covering 56 yards and just under five minutes to punch that one in. Travis, that's something new. That hadn't happened in this game just yet until after halftime. Now, how does Knoxville County come back and respond? We'll see. Robinson back deep to receive along with Jamison and Taylor. 
It'll be a low squibbing kick taken by the up man. And Javancy Jones only able to get it out to the 25 yard line. So that is where Noxaby will start this possession. So the Tigers being tested here. They've had a lot of blowouts this season. Their closest game was way back early in the season when they held uh, West Point down, beating them six to nothing. This is why you, you, you come and buy a ticket for this game. Here we go, Dale Rob Robinson back in the game. Over 100 yards in the first half, he gets this first carry here. Robinson. Nothing flashy that time, but effective. Almost nine yards. Absolutely. That Coach Shorter, you go back to your guy. Just give him the ball, let him try to get a feel for the second half. He looks good. Looked like the leg doesn't bother him that much. Picks up a first down. We're close to a first down. Gutsy effort by Robinson. He had to leave in the first quarter after taking a hit to that thigh, but he's come back and he's been a workhorse. Another pickup there of about six and good for a Tiger first down. I think Coach Shorter sending us a message as to what we're going to see. Exactly what we said we had to see in order for Knox to be, uh, be successful. Feed the ball to Daryl Robinson. First down ball right at the 40. And it's Robinson. Robinson. Reports one tackle in the backfield. Stiff arm. Somehow stays in bounds. Robinson down the sideline. Knocked out at the 10. A huge game, but there was a flag. Way back near the line of scrimmage. Wow. We see how he, he, he put up 49 touchdowns on a, in one season. This kid's something special. But holding, coming back. Huge call. That was the biggest gain of the day for Daryl Robinson. But it is coming back. He was knocked out at the 12, but instead all the way back into Knoxville territory. That is huge for Knoxville and huge for Green County. I mean, you, you, you got Knoxville coming out and running the ball uh, downhill at you, picking up a few first downs. Now you got them in a... You got them pushed back in, in a first and long. So first and 15 after the holding penalty. Robinson going to take a breather after that long run. This time it's an inside give to Jones. Jones wiggles his way for about three. That's a breather. That's a breather for Daryl Robinson. Give the ball to play. Yeah, give the ball to Jones up the middle. Daryl, you just take your time. Sit back there. We're coming right back to you, baby. He's proven he can handle the workload. They gave it to him 42 times in the North State Finals, and he racked up over 250 yards and six TDs in that win last week over Louisville. So he's a horse. He's back in there now, deep man in the eye, and he'll get the carry. This time, not happening. Shaquille Franks. Shaquille Franks is physical. He's not a big guy, but he's a physical, hard-nosed defensive player. Here he is again, shed blocks. Shed blocks the next play. Lined up on the right side of the screen. Takes on the fullback. Bam! Makes a play in the backfield. It's a big time play. That's what you ask your back to do. Don't just take on one man and that's it. Take on the block, shed the block, and make the play. 12th tackle already for Franks. So now third and 13. Ballard forced to throw. He's got time. Now he'll step up, though, feels the pressure, throws it back to Robinson. And Robinson is grabbed there by Jarvis Wallace. Man, this is solid defense. I'm impressed with this Green County defense. They're sound. No matter what happens, everybody sticks with their responsibility. Here you go. You get good pressure again. We thought it was another sack uh, right here by Green County. They got him. I don't know how he gets the ball to Robinson. Gets the ball to Robinson. But again, there's your guy, Wallace. Wallace is there, taking care of his responsibility. Risky throw by Ballard, but he does get it to Robinson. Nonetheless, Tigers forced to punt. Ballard gets the punt off. He gets a good one off, deep over the head of the return man. It's going to bounce at the 25 and then be 
stopped dead at the 23-yard line. So Greene County, after they get the touchdown, they get the stop. Still, momentum on their side, trailing by two. Just over four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Let's see, can, can Greene County come back out and put together another impressive drive? That first drive that they had beginning of the second half was their best drive by far of the evening. Let's see if they think they found a weakness in this Knoxville County defense. They were able to attack the edges on that last drive. First down, Woods again will pitch out to Franks. Nothing there as Franks will be knocked down by Jones. That play was dead before it started. But again, no huddle. They'll try and get to the line quickly. You, go, you see them, they double team Bradley, but that leaves one guy free. Steps up and make the play. They throw it out quick, complete it to McCann, but nowhere to go as the tackle is made immediately. Again, Travis, we talked about this defense and uh, Dennis Brooks, great cornerback. He, you've seen any time they've thrown the ball to his side, he's right there with the receiver, and he, he can lay the wood when he gets there. Good job by 26. Just like that, third and 12, looking at Green County. Another inside screen. This pass is caught. Weaving his way. 15 yards, first out. And the Cats are going to waste no time. Since the ball's put in play, they'll go. Woods holds on to it, and there's your man Bradley. There he is. Nothing going. I mean, he's the guy who they, they rely on him. He's the heart and soul of this defense. Big time play. You just got six points taken off the board. Step up. Great inside move. Loss of a yard. Woods taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Second and 11. Again, pressure. Oh, and again, yeah. he'll go down. Hopkins in on that along with Mr. Bradley. There he is, Bradley again. Everybody you talk to say this kid has it. He's explosive. He has the ability to take control of a game. Here he is. One on, you try to block him one-on-one, -on -one, it's not happening. It's absolutely not happening. He's the type of kid who can dominate and take over a game. I don't care if he's not 6'4". He's 6'1", but he's explosive and he's a playmaker. He is. He's got football speed. I don't know if it's straight line speed, but he gets to the quarterback quickly. Over 20 sacks now is his performance in this game. So third and a mile. Pass to McCann. And they will rule it a catch, so it's out to the 34. Still going to be about seven yards shy of a first down. Over six minutes to go. See what Coach Ainsworth will decide. He's going to send the punting unit on. His defense has been stout all game long, so he's going to need at least one more stop from them. Absolutely. I don't think you even question that. Defense has been playing so solid. Uh, punt the ball. Maybe you get something to happen here on special teams. If not, you get the field position back in your direction. Let your defense, trust in your defense to come out and make a big play. So Petty gets off a good one. Jameson will back away from it. Bounce and fielded at the 34-yard line. So that's where Knoxville will start. 5.38 to go in this 4A state championship game. Tigers clinging to that two-point lead. And as good as the Wildcat defense has been all game, you may need them to make some offense, to create a turnover, to make something happen, because it's been such tough sledding on the other side. I agree, and I think that's what they're looking for. I mean, these guys have been playing hard. Get that ball out of there. Handoff. Robinson has a little bit of running room. He's going to have the sideline. Robinson cuts back inside the 40, tackled at the 35-yard line. A big gainer for Daryl Robinson. Again, you see why we said he's a, a key player. He has to have a big game. You see the shift in this. I mean, he got that guy out there one-on-one -on -one and was able to take it all away. There he is. Just give it to him straight handoff, turn the corner. Now turn on the speed and make, make some guys miss. Great pursuit by the defense to stop a touchdown. His longest run of the day, 33 yards on that pickup. 
Good, good run by Dale Robinson. Great, great finish. Now they give it to Jones, the up man. Jones has room to run. Tough nine yards. I love it. These two teams are battling back and forth. You, you see defense comes out, take control one uh, one series. Offense comes back, take control. Knoxville County is making a push to smell in the end zone, trying to put some more points on the board. They're smelling that state championship too. A touchdown here would put them in really good position to close out a win. Jones, Robinson again in the I formation. But they'll swing it out this time. Pass complete. Good for a first down. That one swung out to Peterson. It's a great pass that time by Ballard. It was safe. Nobody was up close on to him. And pitch and catch, pick up a few, down to the 20, and move the chains. D'Angelo Ballard with a great pass. Gave his, he gave his receiver the opportunity to catch it and get some positive yards. Robinson again will get this one. Robinson to the outside. Has one man to beat. Stiff arm and rid out of bounds inside the five. Robinson's getting comfortable bending the ball, taking it on the edges. There it is. Straight handoff again. Bounce it outside. Turn on the speed. Give stiff arm to get the last four or five yards. There he is. He's trying, like I said, he has 40 down touchdowns on the season, looking for 50. First and goal from the five. Robinson, handoff to the one. Man, this kid's tough. Playing with the five brews, re injured at this game. Won't quit, won't stop. He wants it. Wants to bring that state championship back to Knoxville. Look at that. 35 carries over 173. Hasn't found the end zone, but this may be the play he does. Robinson. Touchdown, Knoxville County. Power I got the two lead. Great push by that right side of the offensive line. Got his lead blockers out there. One of them went in the end zone. Didn't even have anybody to hit. Knoxville County has turned the heat up. Increasing his state record number for touchdowns in a season. That is 5-0 for Daryl Robinson. The eyes of determination as he finishes off the drive. Had the big 33-yard gain to get it going and then punches it in. Now this becomes a huge play as they go for two. And they'll give it to Robinson. And he'll get in. Pushes the lead to 10. Wow. You're talking about a change of events. We just saw this Green County defense a couple series ago step up. We're saying that they were playing with the spark. They were playing with the, with, with passion. Knoxville County just came back and flipped that totally around. Great offensive driving series. Huge answer there for Knoxville County. That offense had been silent for three quarters, but Robinson stirs them awake. Scores the touchdown, gets the two-point conversion. That makes it a 16-6 to game. Man's effort for Robinson tonight as they go 66 yards in six plays and take just 143 off the clock. But the most important thing is they extend the lead to two scores. Absolutely. Now how is Coach Ainsworth going to come back and respond? Down 16-6, down by 10 points. Whatever you do, you got to do it quickly. Only three minutes and 55 seconds left. And the folks that made the drive all the way from Macon, Mississippi on their feet now. Ballard with the kickoff. Taken out about the 15. And the return man runs into his own guy but slips out of a tackle. He worked hard to not pick up too much yardage there. Eventually got brought down at the 21. So 80 yards to go for Green County. Down 10, under four to play. Let's see if we see Woods and Franks connect here. I don't think he, I mean, you have to do something to get a, a, a quick score because you have to come back and get a, a, at least a field goal. Woods will go to the air. 
slings it out. Pass deflected. Almost intercepted. Intended for Petty. There he is, number 26, Dennis Brooks again. He's not going. I mean, we said how solid this, this secondary was for Knoxville County, and it's led by that guy. He's been solid all day long. Anytime the ball comes his, to his guy, he's gotten his hands on it. Looks like Knoxby is going to take a timeout, make sure they got the right personnel out on the field. Coach Ainsworth trying to talk his boys up. All right, I want to send it down to Kim Tanner on the sidelines for a report. Kim? Okay. You know, what's greatness really come from? Sometimes it's small successes, sometimes it's adversity, and in this case, it's adversity for Green County. Coach Ainworth has had a rough season this year, battling his own issues, and now his son with cancer to battle. He, we met with him earlier this week. We faced a lot of adversities this year. Uh, I personally have had, had health problems, uh, missed one ball game uh, during the season of non-division, uh, having to go, you know, to Roger, to Minnesota, to uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, and our kids, uh, we've had a couple injuries we've had to fight through, and uh, these kids are just, you know, band together. And they've played inspired football today. I don't know if it's going to be enough when you got to go up against the likes of Dylan Bradley, who again just wrecking havoc in that backfield. Yeah, you got to get it. Anytime you drop back to pass, you got to get either two guys doubling on him or somebody to chip. You just can't leave him one on one. He's too talented. So third and long. Woods being pursued by seemingly the whole defense and just has to get rid of it. Now, I don't think a lot of people expected. Green County to keep this game as close as they have. I mean, for most of the second half, it was a two-point contest. They were right there with a chance to win it, and the story, what they've accomplished this season has been pretty remarkable, and uh, we wish Coach Ainsworth the best and uh, hope that he gets healthy. Absolutely. You can tell that these kids really love him, and they rally around him, and they're playing hard and have played hard all season long for him. Fourth and 16. Woods gets it out quickly, complete to McCann. McCann out to the 26, but that's going to be about five yards short of a first down, and it'll be a turnover on downs. So Knoxby can start feeling it. The state championship in their grasp, up 10, under three minutes to go. This is a program that has really become one of the powers in the state the last five to six years. They got here in 2007, came up short, returned in 2008, won the gold ball then, their only championship in school history, and on the doorstep of another tonight. It's Coach Shorter, he's just trying to keep his composure, keep his guys under control to try to finish. And Robinson, likely the man to finish this off, carried them on that last drive. And he'll get this carry. Good tackle, though, in the backfield. Green County not going down without a fight, that's for sure. That's what they've been known for all season. That is what they've done tonight. And, and I take my hat off to them because they have played really hard. They have. I mean, like you said, Knox became in this game heavily favored, but Green County has, has met them punch for punch, blow for blow, until here recently when Knox County's put the pedal down. So Green County with only one timeout left. Over two minutes to play here on second down. Oh, the ball is loose, though. The ball's out on the field and recovered there by Jarvis Wallace. But, Jesse, I'm going to tell you, he had time to pick it up and run, but he did the conservative thing to fall on it, which you can't really fault him for. But in that situation, he may have needed to try and go. Absolutely. You saw it was nothing but white jerseys around this ball. Just a, a mishandled uh, snap. 
there you go, nothing but white jerseys oh. around the ball, and he fell on it all, man. If he would have scooped it up, he would have had a convoy taking him in the end zone. You can't fault Jarvis Wallace for that play, but now they get the ball at the 35-yard line, so they still have a chance creating a turnover. Woods out quickly. Franks, Franks with a little bit of room to work with, out past the 40. Franks is slippery. That's a great throw, great catch. Now they got to get back up to the line and try to get something else going. Yeah, you're going to have to get first downs, get to the ball quickly. You only have two minutes to play here. This pass, Woolard. Caught, but dragged down short of the first down, so the clock continues to move. It's a great tackle by number 25 there coming up, making a solid tackle. Third and two. A lot of precious seconds, though, ticking off the clock here. Woods, short pass. McCann had it, but got nailed in the back and couldn't quite hold on to it. Big lick there by Brandon. Well, coming up, the final championship game of the weekend. At 7 o'clock, it is the 5A title up for grabs. Pascagoula coming in to take on Starkville. The Yellow Jackets were here a year ago, came up short, looking to capture the championship tonight. That is coming up after this, but we still got a minute 20 left to play. Fourth and two facing Greene County once we sort out the penalty. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing that Pascagoula Starkville game. Being a guy from Moss Point right next door to Pascagoula, happy to see a coast team coming up here representing. It was another coast team last year that beat Starkville when Picayune got here and took down the Yellow Jackets. But be interested to watch Starkville's quarterback, Gabe Miles, a Mississippi State commit. He will be uh, he will be fun. Take a look at Terrence Woods tonight. It's been uh, tough for him to get a lot of production, and that's why he's faced pressure all night. But he avoids it there. Chase to the sideline, and look at Bradley, no helmet and still pursuing. <laughs> that's what I like. I mean, you, you see, you, you got a lot of star guys who make big plays, but then they take plays off. This kid has been every play. He's been relentless going after the ball. That motor they talk about, his runs constantly. So the Unreal. 12 tackles, two and a half sacks. We highlighted Bradley and Robinson earlier in the game, and both of those guys have delivered championship-level performances. That's what you ask for from your big-time players. You've got us here, but now this is the big show. This is when we really need you step up and make the big plays and show everybody in the state why you're the best. So 113 left to go. Really Knox to be uh, all they have to do is go into victory formation here. That's exactly what Ballard will do. He'll take a knee. But there's a penalty. I think Coach Shorter just got a Gatorade bath. He did. <laughs> this penalty will go against Knoxville. Knock off five yards. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. And there's what you're talking about. Snuck up on from behind. Coach Shorter will take it, though. His first state championship as a head coach and uh, completing a perfect season, a dominant season for Knoxabee County. Tell you what, it was a dominant season, but they had to work for it here. Green County, they came to fight. They played good, solid defense. The offense sputtered for a minute, but then it put put together a good drive to give them uh, six points, but it's a little bit too little, too late. And we have seen some really good games all weekend long here. Um, last night, the 6A game was a was a knockdown, dragout fight. South Panola 
back on top as they win another 6A championship this morning. Hazelhurst with one of the craziest plays you're ever going to see late in the game. They fumbled near the goal line. The defense recovered. Then he fumbled, and the receiver who caused it picked it up, scored. That proved to be the game winner, the Indians over Charleston 21-20. So some really, really good games. And this was another one that was tight throughout and provided a lot of good action. So it's been a it's been a fun weekend to, to get in high school football here in Mississippi. Absolutely, Travis. This is what you're talking about. High school football in Mississippi, uh, it, it gets no better. These, these schools, they played hard. Their fans, their communities have supported them. All of them make the trip up here. This is what we look forward to in Mississippi. Great big-time high school football, which feeds, which feeds our major universities, and that's why they've done so well. One more snap will do it, but the celebration has started. Knoxville County is going to finish the season 16-0 as the Tigers take down Green County tonight by a final of 16-6. Coach Shorter celebrating his first state champion as a head coach, the program's second state championship, and they are the kings of Class 4A. Let the last few seconds tick off the clock. Coach Shorter and his team, they deserve it. Knoxville County. Look at Robinson. Battled that hobbled wheel. Is he still battling it right now? But gutsy effort. Got into the end zone for his 50th touchdown. Proved to be the one that sealed the deal. And the defense for them all afternoon was just so impressive. Didn't give an inch to Green County. And in the end, that proved to be the difference. Coach Shorter has some talent. I mean, he, he put his guys in position to make the plays. And they stepped up and they played big all the way around. Great, great effort, great game. This is why you tune in. This is what you want to see. Close games across all, all divisions and all classifications here in Mississippi. Great football. Let's take a look at the day for Mr. Robinson. 37 carries, a buck 76 on the ground, and the touchdown. That is a couple of weeks' worth. A couple of weeks' work in uh, just one afternoon, and all did it with that bruised right thigh. So... Him or, or Dylan Bradley, you know, it, it probably highlight both of those guys as the, as the top performers in this game. And, you know, the senior leaders, that's what you look for. Absolutely. They're the guys who, who put it all on the line for years to get here. And you want to, as an underclassman, you want to see that, send those guys out with the bank. All right, Kim has Coach Shorter, the champion in Class 4A. Hey, Coach, congratulations on a great win. You said you were a little beat up going into that halftime, but it looked like you pulled through. Yes, we did. Um, number 28, Dale Robinson, he banged up. He just came out, and he said, Coach, I can go, and we just gave it to him. I, I, I'm proud of this coaching staff. Our coaching staff has done a very good job all year, and these 23 seniors that we have, I, I can't say enough. I can't say enough about them. How's it feel to have your first one as a coach? Hey, it's feels it's just big for me. I mean, this is my third time coming down here and it's first time as a head coach and it's just God just good. Just God just good. You talk a little bit quickly about the leadership of those guys you were mentioning. Man, them two or three seniors, they told me this spring that they was gonna win a state championship, they were gonna go sixteen and oh, and those guys came out every day during the summer, every day during the spring, they work extremely hard. And that's the reason why we're here, those two and three seniors. Congratulations, Thank Coach, on a great win. Travis. Thank you, Kim. And you can't beat the raw emotion of a head coach as he's realized his dream, his team's dream, as Knoxville County is bringing the championship back to Macon, Mississippi. 16-6, to the Tigers over the Wildcats in the Class 4A title game. We'll be back to wrap things up on the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi presents the 6th Annual Mississippi Blues Marathon, Saturday, January 5th, 2013. You can run it, walk it, or watch it, but you'll want to be a part of it. For more information or to volunteer, www.msbluesmarathon.com. Every year, the Mississippi High School Activity Association provides opportunities for over 500,000 high school students to pursue excellence. Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to play a part to keep rich traditions like the Mississippi High School Football Championships alive and well. With home offices located in Jackson and agents in all 82 counties, Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance is ready to serve your auto, home, and life needs. On November 22, 1981, the Rolling Stones joined Muddy Waters on stage at a small club in Chicago. Relive this intimate night of blues and rock icons. Don't miss Muddy Waters and the Rolling Stones, live at the Checkerboard Lounge. Thursday at 7 on MPB. E-Learning for Educators, in partnership with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Improved teacher knowledge. Improved teaching practices. Increased student achievement. Online professional development for educators. Earn CEU credit. Fits easily in your schedule from the convenience of your home. Register for courses now at www.mpbonline.org. Inspired teaching, inspiring students. Today's move of the game, what else than the touchdown number 50 for Daryl Robinson. Part of a 176-yard outing, Daryl Robinson with the move of the game. That was the touchdown that sealed the win for Knoxby County. And they got their hands on another gold ball, the first one since 2008. We do want to congratulate the winners of the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi Gridiron Classic Text to Win Contest. And just like the game, it's Knoxabee County. They will receive a $1,000 donation from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. And Jesse, this is the team that had the target on their back all season in Class 4A, and they lived up to it. Absolutely. Coach Shorter put together a great team. As he said, 23 seniors. They set out to go 16-0 and this season, and that's exactly what they did. They had big-time plays from their big players. And as you see right there, they come home with the goal. For everybody here helping out with the broadcast today, we say thanks for Kim down on the field, Jesse up in the booth with me. I'm Travis. Congrats to Knoxby County, the class 4A champs. Make it a good one. <laughs>